What is up, everyone, and welcome to a very gay episode of The Tape Tomb. It's Pride Month, so we're talking about one of the most blatantly homosexual movies in the horror genre this week, and that's not a knock by any means. This is an absolute banger of a film, and if it had come out at a different time, it probably would have been way more successful. But we're talking about the return of the dream queen, honey, and Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge from 1985. The Return of the King of Nightmares has a totally different approach to the usual slasher vibe of the 80s, as we trade in our famous last girl mentality for a last boy? Hey, whatever, I'm for it. The world may not have been ready for it, but guess what? That's bullshit. This is one of the strongest movies in the series, and I like this one more than Dream Warriors. Yeah, I said it, but before we break down this film, let's get into the guts. This movie was directed by Jack Shoulder, who had written The Hidden, Alone in the Dark, and Arachnid, and to help him write this fabulous fantasy flick, we have David Chaskin, who really didn't do anything after this, it was his big shot, and after that it was all downhill from there. Returning to play his role of the King of Nightmares, Freddy Krueger is the man, Robert England. And we got Mark Patton to play Jesse, our main protagonist, Kim Myers to play Lisa, Jesse's girlfriend, at least in her head, and Robert Russler to play Grady. Russler in this same year would play Max in the movie Weird Science, which has sweet oingo boingo jams in it. But what's this movie about? Let's put on the glove and see if it fits. Roll the film. We start this movie out with a local bus picking up kids that go to high school. We see our main protagonist, Jesse, sitting in the back of the bus looking like a total stressed out dork. As a few minutes go by and we see the bus driver skip a few stops for the kids and go guns a blazing into the desert, things all start to go terribly wrong and we realize that things are not as they seem as the bus ends up dangling from a pillar in the middle of some hellscape and the driver is revealed to be none other than Freddy Krueger. Clearly this is all a dream and Jesse wakes up shortly screaming bloody murder. <laughs> Jesse gets ready and heads out to school only to get in trouble in gym with his soon to be new friend Grady. They initially fight but get over it real quick as during their punishment they get all buddy buddy as the coach gets all excited watching from afar. After school Jesse tries to go out with his friends only to be stopped by the most oblivious dad on the planet telling him that he has to put his stuff away in his new room. You see, Jesse and his family are new to Elm Street, they just moved into this vaguely familiar house that I'm sure is totally fine. Oh wait, maybe not. After busting out some questionable moves and getting some help from his new gal pal Lisa, they stumble upon an old diary in his closet and it belongs to Nancy, our protagonist from the first Nightmare flick. While reading it, they hear stories about Fred Krueger and start to put the pieces together of what happened in their new house. That night, Jesse falls asleep and winds up at a gay bar to catch himself in Nightcap, only to be gripped up by his gym teacher and taken back to the school for only one reason I can think of. Well, Coach's romantic evening was put on hold as Freddy possesses Jesse and puts Coach on hold. And after a couple of little spanks to his bottom, Freddy kills him using Jesse, causing one of many intense Jesse screams. <laughs> So at this point, we realize Fred Krueger wants to come back, but he needs a body, and that body is Jesse. As Jesse descends deeper and deeper into sleepless insanity, what will he do to keep himself and his friends safe as Fred Krueger gets deeper under Jesse's skin? Find out for yourself in the fabulous sequel, Freddy's Revenge. This movie isn't gay? Are you kidding me? Roll the slide. Some people would call those homoerotic undertones, but those people are in denial. Everyone on the set was fully aware of the queer vibes that this was giving off and was totally admitting to it, except for sleazeball director Jack Shoulder, who never admitted to it, bashed Mark Patton for making his movie gay and ultimately unsuccessful. So why would this movie catch such major backlash for having something as harmless as a queer protagonist? Well, at this same exact time, the AIDS epidemic was in full swing. And although I'd like to think that we have made some major leaps in humanity in 2022, the 80s was not the same, and America looked at the gay community as some sort of danger. And if you still got a problem with this movie in 2022 for that reason, Get over it. The only danger here is Mark Patton stealing your man, Karen. Mark Patton absolutely killed it in this role. He acted his ass off, and I think is more convincing than a dozen other characters in the other Elm Street movies. If you want the whole backstory on his problems with the making of this movie and how it affected his life then and now for the better, check out the stellar documentary Scream Queen on Shudder, Amazon Prime, and maybe a few others. This is a solid Elm Street movie. It's got cool special effects, awesome gore, a really entertaining and convincing protagonist, and it gets bashed for a really dumb reason. 
for a unique approach and the pure silliness of four foot something Robert England running around scaring teenagers at a pool party, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge is a perfect fit for us here at the Tape Tune. Here's some facts about Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge. New Line Cinema originally didn't ask Robert England to return as Freddy Krueger and refused to pay him a pay raise. A stuntman was cast as Freddy at the start of production. After two weeks of filming, Robert Shea realized that this was a terrible lapse in judgment, fired the stuntman, hired England, and met his demands. Way to flex on him, Mr. England. This movie was really well received in Europe as the residents of those countries were fully aware and actually really enjoyed the sexual undertones of the film. Hey Europe, thanks for being cool. In an interview featured in In Search of Darkness Part 2, Robert England states that he was fully aware of the homoerotic elements of the film and was enthusiastic about playing these undertones up on screen interactions with Freddy and Jesse. Mark Patton says in Never Sleep Again, The Elm Street Legacy, that he had to say no to some pieces of the business such as Freddy putting his blades in Jesse's mouth and a couple other scenes that made him feel uncomfortable. Thank you all so much for tuning into another episode of The Tape Team. If you liked this week's episode, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below or drop me a comment telling me what other movies I should talk about in future episodes. Tune in every other week to our sister series, Airlock Shock, starring Nick Haskin. He's always talking about awesome sci-fi flicks just like we do horror here at The Tape Team. I'm your host, Larry Downs. Stay spooky, my friends, and we'll see you in the sequel, and have a happy Pride.